Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, May 31, 2021. Jamaica has received another batch of COVID-19 vaccines containing 55,200 doses manufactured by AstraZeneca. The shipment, which is also part of the COVAX facility, arrived on Sunday at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston. The supply will be used to inoculate persons who are due their second dose, as well as groups being targeted for vaccination. Persons eligible to be vaccinated include Jamaicans 50 years and older, healthcare workers, members of the JCF, JDF and Jamaica Fire Brigade, along with staff members from PICA, Jamaica Customs Agency and the Department of Correctional Services. Up to Friday, May 28, approximately 155,683 Jamaicans have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, while 22,206 persons have received their second dose. Meanwhile, Jamaica's COVID care program has received a donation of 11,339 food packages and 30 tablet computers valued at 1.06 million U.S. dollars. The United Nations World Food Program has donated the items to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda says the food packages will be distributed across the country to vulnerable households affected by the pandemic, particularly the elderly. The computers will support the registration and verification of potential beneficiaries. During a tour of the ministry's warehouse on Friday, he said the assistance was a welcomed addition to the ministry's own food program for needy persons. The effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially on the on the workforce, therefore anything that contributes to the sustenance of the family is welcome. The tourism product development company TP Deco has withdrawn the COVID-19 compliance certification for an entertainment venue Rick's Cafe with immediate effect. It follows an order from the local government ministry for the cafe to be closed for seven days. The management of the entertainment venue has also been summoned to a meeting with officials from that ministry and ODPEM. The actions stem from news reports that the venue, which is located in Negril, Westmoreland, breached the government's COVID-19 protocols by staging an event called Mocha Fest. The venue will be required to undergo a recertification exercise to ensure strict adherence to the health and safety protocols before it can be allowed to accept visitors again. In the meantime, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says such actions will not be tolerated within the industry. He argues that the breach undermines the protocols that were created and the Tourism Resilient Corridor Program, which have gained international recognition. Mining Minister Robert Montague says government has made further amendments to the mining lease governing the cockpit country to address concerns raised by stakeholders. Minister Montague gave the update while making his contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament recently. He says government has modified the special mining lease, SML-173, resulting in 6,000 hectares of land being removed from the original document to be replaced by additional lands. The decision was made following meetings with residents and other stakeholders to explore their complaints. By replacing what was removed, we have satisfied not only the provisions of the law, but the establishment agreement and the conditions of the license. Madam Speaker, our Prime Minister, has led from the front on this matter. And his steadfast and steady hands have created balance between the concerns of the company and our agreement and the demands of the people and the Prime Minister must be commended. Minister Montague says discussions are also underway with citizens of St. Anne and the owners of the Bengal development to identify suitable lands to pursue limestone mining in the area. And finally, the Jamaican and Cuban governments have signed an agreement to extend bilateral cooperation in education. The agreement was recently signed at the Ministry of Education's National Hero Circle offices in Kingston. It provides for continued professional and academic support from Cuban teachers in the Jamaican school system. We at the ministry are happy to see this program extended and our hope is that it will continue to redound to the benefit of the two Countries. The education minister says there are 86 Cuban teachers now working at 78 schools from the primary to tertiary level. Approximately 438 Cuban teachers and professors have offered their services in Jamaica since 1997. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.